2019 is turning into a very good year for Chef Kwame Unwachi. Food & Wine magazine named the 29-year-old one of the best new chefs in America. He's been nominated for the prestigious James Beard Award, and he is the executive chef at one of Washington, D.C.'s hottest restaurants, Kith & Kin. But his career hasn't just been a series of highs. He's also experienced some lows as well. And he writes about it in his new book, which is called Notes from a Young Black Chef. Kwame, it's so nice to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. So let's start at the very beginning. You talk mm -hmm. about your childhood, which was a rough childhood, and not one that you might think reading about it would be like, oh, yes, by his mid-20s, he'd be a wildly successful <laughs> chef. Mm -hmm. Walk us through kind of where you grew up. Well, I grew up in the Bronx. Uh, my mother, she operated a catering company from our one bedroom apartment. And uh, my sister and I became like her first two employees. So instead of doing laundry um, and taking out the trash, I was peeling shrimp and fabricating vegetables for the small little brigade that we had in our, in our kitchen. And you had some troubles. I mean, at one point your mom sends you off and you're about 10 to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. You know, growing up in the Bronx, um, I say in New York City in general, it's easy to veer off on the wrong path. You're left to your laurels a lot. And um, she wanted to nip that in the butt. You know, she didn't want to see me in a body bag or in jail. And it was between military school and Nigeria. And Nigeria was substantially cheaper. <laughs> so she sent me there. You had experiences dealing drugs uh, in a gang. And these are all things that you talk about. What, where did cooking come into that? For me, I think food has always been a common thread throughout my life. You know, um, my mother being a chef, living in Nigeria, we had to cultivate our own, you know, food. We had to raise our own livestock. You know, we had to go and harvest different things. And that intrigued me as a kid, you know, and, and it trickled into my um, adulthood. And when I had to fend for myself and provide for myself, um, I reverted back to cooking. You became very successful to the point where you were handed the reins of a fancy restaurant called Shaw Bijou. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing and expensive and fabulous until it was not. Exactly. Tell me a little bit about that restaurant. Well, the restaurant was um, kind of like the brainchild between me and my one of my best friends. So this restaurant, we took a old 200 year old Italianate row house and transformed it into a restaurant. And it took, you know, two and a half years to really build. And we built it with our hands. We tiled everything. We painted the walls. You know, we put up drywall. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, it didn't pan out how we expected it to. But, you know, you, you got to keep going. And then the people who did not love the first restaurant when Kith and Kin came to be mm -hmm. have jumped on the bandwagon and <laughs> love you. It's become wildly successful. Tell me a little bit about Kith and Kin and how it's different. So Kith and Kin means friends and family. I wanted to cook the way so that I So now we're friends cook. and family, so we can all come and eat at your restaurant. Exactly. But that's what I say when guests come. I say, welcome home, you know, because this is how my friends and family eat. We get a lot of different dishes. We spread them out on the table. We try a little bit of this, try a little bit of that. And there's really four pillars of cuisine that um, Kith and Kin represents, Trinidadian, Jamaican, Nigerian, and Creole. And you sprinkle in some of the diaspora and the American South, and there you have Kith and Kin. There have been black people in kitchens forever. Mm -hmm. um, and I would imagine if you walked into any restaurant, famous restaurant, not famous restaurant, there'll be a whole bunch of black and brown people working in the back. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of chefs. Why not? Um, well, I think it's the same reason why there are not a lot of black quarterbacks, you know? And if you go back 40, 50 years ago, they said that we didn't have the mental capacity to quarterback a team and we're proving them wrong and we need to continue to prove them wrong. But I think it's really, um, it comes from the top down, you know, it comes from editorial staffs having more diverse writers. So they are more inclined to go out and seek out these young black chefs or black chefs in general. You know, it takes investors to put their, you know, put their cards in, you know, black chefs hands and, and let them um, have their shot. You know? Do you see that as part of your role? If you're a very visible and successful Absolutely. black chef, you can move the needle for other Absolutely. black chefs? You know, I think as, as chefs in general, we have a platform. We have to choose what we're going to do. We can continue to put out great food, um, which is, you know, part of our job. But we also have another job to do, and that's to advocate for something. And that's what I'm here advocating for. The book is called Notes from a Young Black Chef. It's excellent. Thank a you. memoir at 20. 7, 29 <laughs> now. Kwame Anwachi, nice to have you. Thank you for having you me. My pleasure.